All right, I have the pleasure of sitting down with someone who just finished their rookie year in the WNBA, Taya Cooper, point guard for the Los Angeles Sparks. Taya, man, thank you for coming coming here. I have to say, I have to say, you, you're a little distracting right here because there's a lot of bling going on here, but especially on that, that, finger, <laughs> that finger right there. There's a lot, lot going on right here. Well, what, what, where, where did that come from? To explain, what, what's that all about? Um, it's an engagement ring. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's that's just all. a major ring. Okay. Yeah. So Tay, you you're here you're here in this bubble. You just finished. You're you're probably the only person that's been in both bubbles. Yeah. You're a bubble there and this bubble here. Yeah. Well, so obviously everybody probably know. Uh, Dwight yeah. Howard, fiance. Uh you and you came here for Dwight. How long have you been here uh thus far? Um, I had to I went from my bubble to home and then I came because I had to take my stuff back. Um I had to quarantine for a few days and then, so I've been here for about, I don't even know. You know when you're in the bubble, you, the days hey, just go by. Believe me, I've been here since June 29th. So oh, for I, real? Yeah, so I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, see, I don't even know how long I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good, but I, I got to get your perspective. Nobody, you're the only one who can say they've been to both. What, 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 are, some, what are some similarities? What are some differences that, you, that you've seen? Um... Okay, so in both bubbles, you have to test every day. Um, the difference is we were in like a hotel and then we had villas. This is like a whole Disney resort. So it's bigger. Um, it's like everybody is in like a circle. Mm -hmm. um, with us, it was like people stayed in the hotel and then some people stayed in the villas and then some people stayed like in lodges that was like 10 minutes away. Um, I think with our bubble, everybody was able to be around each other. Mm -hmm. So like the referees were in the pool all the time, the, all the teams were together. Mm -hmm. We were all tested, so they didn't really have too many rules on being at the pool or being in certain lounge places. Um, here, it's super strict. Yeah. Um, I feel like you can't really talk to the workers mm -hmm. or like anything like that. So I don't think I've seen a ref um, you got to go down further. The refs are on that end. Oh, okay. The end of the See, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been over there, so I haven't yeah. seen any of that. I only go to Three Bridges and the hotel so in you, the 16th. You've been stuck. <laughs> so, there's a whole other world, like on yeah, this side. Yeah, but of I end, don't think. Know? Can you go that far? You can go. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. We, well, then now, maybe. media, we can't go over there where you guys are at. Like, we can't go over on Three Bridges. Oh, okay. But you, y'all have free access to the whole, whole oh. property. Oh, okay. Well then. Then I get that in difference. <laughs> I guess y'all y'all are in here together. Yeah, you gotta get to know the campus. I want to say, but look, you just finished your rookie year. Like people, people don't know you have a tremendous story of how you got here, and I kind of want to touch on that. So, anyway, people know you now. You have made a mark for yourself, rookie season. Mm -hmm. But take me back. You were drafted in the second round by the Phoenix Mercury. Mm -hmm. Kind of. I don't want to tell the story. Can you just walk me through just the steps? and how you got to the point where you are now. Okay. I was at Baylor University. Mm -hmm. Our season got cut short. We was gonna make it to the national championship, but it got cut short because of Corona. We got home. We didn't know we was gonna have a draft. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew we was gonna have a draft. It was up in the air. And we ended up having a draft on my birthday, April 16th. Yeah. Um, I was one of the top 10 players, so I was invited to the draft. So I did the little ESPN thing. And then I went second round to Phoenix. Um, I did some Zoom calls with them. You know, that's all you could do. Couldn't yeah. nobody go see nobody in Phoenix. So, you know, you Zoom call, you talk to everybody all day. And then we decided to have a bubble. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew we was gonna have a bubble. Yeah. And they decided to do pay cuts because you can only have a certain amount of people on the team. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to have um, training camp. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't. So hold, let me stop you right there. So when they when when word got out that they were going to do pay cuts and they were mm -hmm. going to trim rosters, it went from 15 to 12. Yeah. Was there any concern in your head at that point? Well, I think when um, it was some time, it was like a few weeks in between where they had to do the cuts. So uh -huh. when they was doing the pay cuts, I was still on the team, uh -huh. and then some time went by, and Phoenix didn't have enough for that many players. So then they had to do a pay cut. And that's when I found out I was getting waived. And when I found out that, for some reason, it didn't hit me. I think news hit me a little late. <laughs> I think, I think so stuff hits me a little late, yeah. yeah. So 
Um, I was in the gym when I found out and I don't really think about stuff. So when it happened, it was like, there's nothing I could do. I couldn't control it. I didn't get to have training camp. I didn't get to show nothing other than my senior year that got cut short. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I couldn't really be upset. And it was coronavirus, it was a pandemic. Like, it was nothing I could do. Yeah. So I stayed in the gym. Atlanta wasn't really closed like that. So we had the gym, the weight room. Um, I could pretty much do anything. So I just filled my day with stuff like that. So I didn't really, yeah. So when they let you go, what was going through your mind as far as your next steps? Um, I didn't know if overseas was an option because of Corona. Um, I didn't know, I didn't know nothing. All I knew was yeah. I could be in the gym, yeah. I'm healthy, I can still play. If the opportunity presents itself, I'm gonna be ready. That's the only thing I knew. So that's what I did. My brother, um, Sharif Cooper and Omar Cooper was getting ready for college. So I was with them, you know, preparing them for that process. And um, that's really what all that I was focusing on was my family and being able to be in the gym. And then all of a sudden, mm. the Sparks called and I thought they just was gonna do another Zoom call and they just was gonna talk to me. So, so when they called, did Shanae and Christy Tolliver, did they had already opt out at that point? Oh yeah, so in between them weeks of me okay. waiting on the call, I seen people opting out. Yeah. A lot of people didn't want to go. Yeah. I'm like, shoot, I'm going to the phone. <laughs> if I get the opportunity, I'm up. going. But, you know, I respect everybody that opted out. But, um, yeah, a lot of people was doing it. It was a lot of, everybody was just mm -hmm. moving. So. I was like, oh shoot, okay. might get an opportunity. And then the Sparks call. And it's crazy because I've always wanted to play for the Sparks. Mm. And um, it was a joke. I think I did an interview in the beginning and I had a little song. Uh, I had a rap song I had to do for like elementary school or something. Exactly. And I remembered it and it had the Sparks in it. And um, he said he was gonna send the contract over and I didn't even look at it, I just signed it. And <laughs> wow. I ended up, Playing for the Sparks, and um, that was a very fun experience. Hold on, can you can you can you drop a few bars from, from that song? For, let me on, let me try to remember. I'm you, getting nervous. <laughs> you, had, you had it for a while, T. Let me see. Let me see. Come on. Um, it was it's Taya from the Art. I shoot it from the park. Get a lot. I'm hot. I should be on the Sparks. That's what's up. That's what you spoke. You spoke into existence. You spoke right. into existence right there. No, nah, yeah. and look and look. Overall, look now. You proved yourself this year. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, I gotta get to this. Cause I love, like me, you know, I, I hold grudges sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I love payback. I love getting back at people. Your first game, the first game is against who? Phoenix. Phoenix. I know, right? <laughs> when the schedule came out, I was like, ah! <laughs> you hit them up, you know, you got 10 points off the bat, off the bench. Can you tell, tell me just about what that was like? like your emotions going into that first game against the team that let you go? Um, so we was watching film uh -huh. and um, I, we, don't get to, we didn't get to practice much because you know, we had an older team, certain bodies, you know, they had to be healthy for a long bubble season. Mm -hmm. And we played game, game, off day, game, off day, game, off day. So we couldn't really do too much in practice. But I ain't been in the league yet. Yeah. So I ain't get yeah. to go through screens, get hit, yeah. feel any of that. So I'm watching film and I'm watching BG set screens. Uh -huh. Nobody's getting through them. So all I can think about is, oh, they stress is getting through screens. Right. And I'm watching her set the screens uh -huh. and I don't see nobody recovering. <laughs> so in the first, right? the first minutes of the game, um, I'm talking to Fish, Fish talks to me before the game. Uh -huh. Um, so I wasn't really nervous. I just treated it as practice because it wasn't no fans. Got you. So it, it felt like practice. Uh -huh. And um, he subbed me in. I, I, I was thinking, you know, I was going to get a little splash, you yeah. know, get my little feet wet, yeah, a little two sure. minutes here, two minutes there. It was, we was up by a lot, so I ended up playing a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, I went through the first screen. She stuck, stuck her arm out. Oh, okay. Woke me up a little bit. I'm like, all right, now uh, I got to yeah. like, really get through the screen. <laughs> right. So I'm talking about. Um, I'm playing defense. It felt normal. It didn't feel too fast. It didn't feel too crazy. Yeah. So I got comfortable. And then um, after the game, Fish was laughing because that was my first time having to play defense and do the offenses and everything without yeah. practice. Yeah. And um, it was cool. And it was crazy that it was them. So. Yeah. No, that, yeah. That, 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 was, that was a good experience. I, so I want to talk to the LA Sparks. 
got lost, got bounced in the second round. How would you overall view the impact that you guys were able to have this season? Uh, with NECA being the president um, and watching her just control what happened, like mm -hmm. as far as us speaking out, us wearing these shirts, our yeah. jerseys, and um, you know, things were happening in the bubble, like the Jacob story yeah. happened in the bubble, mm -hmm. us deciding to sit out a game, um, you know, having to do that collectively with a whole league, with a whole bunch of teams and different players and um, different feelings and opinions, I think that was huge. And she was on my team. Yep. So I got to see everything she was dealing with, all the conversations she was having. She included us on Zoom calls. Um, we spoke to a lot of the families that this happened to. So I think just being a part of that team and especially with Candace speaking out and mm -hmm. uh, Simone and everybody, I had so many vets. Yeah. So I really just got to watch them like be great women and have a voice. And I think that was very important. This, this is just an unprecedented year to start your professional career. I know, right? It, it was like, you, you dealt with a lot. Like it was up <laughs> to down, you know, I, I was here, you know, you know, dealing with, you know, similar yeah. things here. How, how, how close did you guys monitor what the NBA players were going through, you know, during, the, during that time with the Jacob Floyd shooting? Mm -hmm. um, I think that, you know, we really did try to stay like the NBA and WNBA being together and it was a conversation of, you know, not, not playing no more. We was gonna sit out a game and then it was like, they might not play the whole season anymore. They might not do this. And then, then it was like, well, checks. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's a difference. Yeah. Checks uh, so yeah, so there was a lot that went into it, especially with it being um, us dealing with coronavirus mm -hmm. and a lot, a lot of people not having jobs. So um, as much as we tried to stay together, we had to know that we were a different league. Mm -hmm. So I think, we did a great job at that. Well, they did a great job at that. And we, whatever we did, we was doing it together. Mm -hmm. Whether it was with the NBA or without, the WNBA was going to stay together. So I think that was huge. What, how, do you look at, how do you look at where you're headed now in the WNBA? Like, I know, obviously, you talked about it. Like, you didn't have really practices to get, to get kind of ingrained into how everybody's played. You kind of just thrown in there. Mm -hmm. Now do you feel like you have the confidence? Like, do you know what you're capable of now? Or are you still, like, kind of question, like, where am I going to leave my mark in this game? No, I think I have a better understanding. And um, Fish is such a great coach. I mean, he spent so much time with me, like learning, even though I couldn't be on the court. Mm -hmm. He was very, he was always in the lobby. He was always ready to talk. He was always ready to go back to the gym and do extra work. So I think with that and him believing in me was enough for me to like know that I could do this, mm -hmm. for, like basically. But, um, after talking to him after the season, it was like, you here now? Yeah, like, <laughs> so, I mean, we talked about things that I wanted to work on and um, the off season is just, it's gonna be nonstop, so. And that's point guard to point guard. So you guys can have good conversations. Yeah. You know where you're coming from, know what you dealt with or, or going to deal with in the future. So that's a good relationship to have. I, I, want, I want to ask, what do you think about the Lakers, the Los Angeles, the Lakers, the Los Angeles <laughs> Sparks? Uh, franchise. Oh, let me rewind that. So, what do you think about the Los Angeles Sparks as a franchise? Your first year being there. Who? Um, we didn't get to meet everybody, mm -hmm. but we got to meet a lot of people. So, um, everybody that is in LA or is a part of the uh, the organization was in every WhatsApp message, every mm -hmm. individual message, and they sent me so many messages. Um, being proud of me, and I think that really meant a lot because I never got to meet them. They never got to meet me. All they did was see me in videos or yeah. in the game. So that really meant a lot. And um, so I have a lot of numbers with people I've never seen in real life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the fact that they, you know, reach out to everybody and you know send those kind of messages meant a lot to me. So I feel like it's a great organization. They're very um, serious about being family and um, caring about one another and having a certain type of culture. And for them to think that I fit that culture was very prestigious to me. That's cool. And so the WNBA has been trying to gain relevancy as far as being in the forefront of what people want to watch when they're watching sporting events. Mm -hmm. And over time, you've just seen the surge, especially from the NBA players, starting to talk about the WNBA more, uh, promoting the brand, promoting the league. What have you seen from the NBA players as far as the – the support that they've been given as of recently to the league? Um, 
Well, you know, Kobe was the forefront for that. And um, I think just to see everybody wearing the orange WNBA shirts yeah. or wearing people's jerseys or talking about us, tweeting about us, I think that's like, that's love. So just to have their support and for them to actually watch our games and know what's going on and just be tuned in, I think that's amazing. That's what I'm and I got to ask you now, now that you're here, bring it back to here. I got a homeboy by the name of D Murph. He, he was at the game yesterday. He told me, man, you were one of the loudest people over there cheering over there. <laughs> <laughs> Lakers and Dwight Howe. What is the experience of just watching the games right now, watching the NBA Finals being played? Um, I think it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the regular season, it's more like oohs and ahs, fun, mm -hmm. fun games. But, like, now you can see, like, the – the strategies and like they going in their lead, they actually playing defense, like it's serious, mm -hmm. like you could tell. And then just to see them bring the energy that you, that you don't have without fans. So like seeing them make a shot and then look at the crowd, but ain't no yeah, crowd. No crowd <laughs> that joke is so funny to me, but you know, it gets you hype. And the fact that we sitting over there, I mean, we can't do nothing but bring energy. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I was just having fun over there. And the DJ be, the DJ hey, he be was on point. He was DJ on point. Hey, he was playing a lot of those West Coast, okay. West Coast jams, but no, he was on point. I don't yeah. know. I got to find out who that was. <laughs> My guy said, that's about Dwight. Now, Dwight, let me see, the series against Denver. I told you, I told you, I'm like, man, a couple of those games, I thought she going to get ejected, man. He was bothering Jokic, man. He was getting all into him. And then, like, he just, he stopped for a little. He, he quieted, you know, quieted down and got back to the basket. What was going through Dwight during that time? It's like he went from, like, an enforcer role, like getting in, be an you know, agitator, and then he just like calm down, subdued, like later on. Like, what was that transition like? And were you telling him anything? What was your advice to him do all that time? Um, you know, one thing about Dwight, Dwight gonna use all his fouls. <laughs> <laughs> Dwight gonna use That's all true. his fouls. That's true. He got some. But um, you know, I think he wasn't really trying to to foul him. He really was just trying to get in his head. Mm -hmm. And as a player, that's annoying. Yeah. And he's so strong, yeah. like, it's not just a regular foul. Like, you feel like you're getting abused. Mm -hmm. So it's like right. for 40 minutes, he's annoying him. Mm -hmm. So to do that in the first few games and then ease up, like, I think that was just annoying. And it's like mind game. So, I mean, it worked no in our favor. No we ended up winning. But, um, you know, I think that him just talking and, and his energy that he brings is, is just as much as a foul. Mm -hmm. So I think he's realizing that, and um, that's what he's been showing in this series. Yeah, no, for sure, for so, sure. Yeah, with the minutes he get, he's giving everything he got, and that's all he can do. No, for sure. So I mean, uh, you use that, you use the word uh, "our." I mean, you know, talking about the Lakers, talking about we. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, who did who did you have before? What was your prediction before the series? I, I'm not going to ask you now. Because it's, it's looking like we're getting out of here pretty early. <laughs> but what was your prediction before the series started? Um, the Lakers. The Lakers, okay. <laughs> and what? How many games? What were you saying? I don't know. I didn't really think about that. I just knew okay. we were going to get the job done. All right. What about the WNBA? What was your prediction in that, that finals? <sighs> well, I thought it was going to be us, but we got yeah. out a little early. But mm -hmm. um, I was rocking with... Uh, Vegas. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I love Asia. Yeah. I love Asia and Dierica. But then Dierica got hurt. And it was a little mm -hmm. iffy, but they can't, they, they, fin they uh, finished. So I don't know. Seattle story look going a little crazy right yes. now. And uh -huh. then Jewel Lloyd, I don't know. I, I don't know. Asia got franchise. fighting her, though. Yeah. It's uh -huh. not too many times she take L. So. Uh -huh. So it sounds like you want you want to kind of let it be and let the, let the results play out. Yeah, so, I okay. decided like the last two minutes. Of the court, I <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fair. No, no, look, tell you, look, you had a phenomenal season. I think your story is awesome, man. I hope Thank you keep you. persevering. And I, you know, it'd be good for you to experience a normal WNBA season where you're actually in right. your home city. Because it would have been cool, like that, you know. You and Dwight to you know be in the same city together. Yeah, that was that, crazy. No, that that, that that's how we was, ended up both yeah, in LA. Yeah, that, that's like I said, the story and the story keeps going. It's not going to end. All right. So no, I appreciate you taking this time. Thank you. I no. appreciate you. Um.